Hello, in this video, I'm going to explain overall food properties measurement methods, why we need to predict food properties beyond the measurements. In addition, I'm going to add discussions on the applications of food properties on process design and simulation, food safety and quality assessment, and food packaging interactions. I'm confident that you'll find this video interesting. Food properties can be measured by subjective and objective methods. If an instrument is used to measure food property, then it is an objective method. If human is used as an instrument, then it is a subjective method. Emotions are included in the subjective methods, whereas instruments do not have any emotional components. Objective methods are unable to include the psychological components. However, using artificial intelligence in a robotic measurement, some degree of emotional logic could be included. In this slide, we can see that crunchiness or hardness of a potato chip could be measured by applying a force. Whereas, same characteristics could be measured by human using a force applied by teeth. In the first case, it is rheological properties, whereas second one is the textual properties. Similarly, crunching sound could be measured by instrumental acoustic microphone, whereas it could be assessed by hearing on the eardrum placed inside human ear. Sensory properties are measured subjectively using expert or trained, untrained, panels and individuals or consumers that is consumers panel. Many of the sensory properties are related to physical and physicochemical properties as measured objectively with instruments. However, this does not mean that instrumentally measured characteristics are sensory properties. Textural properties are tactile properties perceived inside the mouth but taste and flavor are not included. Some instances texture could be assessed before perceived senses in the mouth. For example, compressing the foods by fingers or fork. The main difference between texture and other sensory attributes is the texture is perceived mainly by biting and masticating and assessed by tactile and sound inside the mouth. The following discussion could help to highlight the difference. The rheological nature of a food and the food texture are two different things. Rheological properties are measured objectively using suitable instruments that allow control deformation of a food by applying force. Texture, however, has to be measured subjectively. It depends partly, of course, on the food's rheological properties, but also potentially on a number of other properties, for example, shape, size, porosity, and thermal properties, and on the expectations and prior experiences of the person assessing the texture that is emotional component. In many cases, Texture can be correlated quite well with an instrumentally measured rheological property, often an empirical or imitative one. But texture as such can be measured only by subjective means. We could provide another example similar to potato chips as mentioned in the earlier slide. Crunchiness of an apple could be measured by applying a compressive force while crunchiness could also be measured by biting. Instrumental one is the rheology, while biting one is the texture. Both subjective and objective method have their own advantages and limitations. However, food properties as measured by a subjective method could be correlated with properties as measured by an objective method. This could make the quality control process easy during formulation, processing, 
preservation and storage. Since sensory has long time consuming structured procedures and needs a complex statistical analysis for interpretation. However, missing of emotional or psychological component makes the instrumental method limited for the sensory measurement. Still, instrumental method usually gives low variability since all experimental measurement variables could be controlled in the labs, whereas sensory methods can result high variability due to the complexity of emotional factors. However, structure measurement method of sensory and their advanced analysis and interpretation are playing an important role to address these issues. Hardness of a potato chip could be measured by rheological and textural methods. In this slide, we can see that relationship between objective and subjective methods could be linear or nonlinear. However, in a complex scenario, any acceptable correlation may be difficult to achieve. First, why do we need to predict? There are three main reasons. First, difficulty in experimental measurement due to its cost, labor intensive, and need to specialize knowledge and skills. Second, in many instances, experimental measurement is relatively impossible to measure or very difficult to measure. For example, if we want to measure the storage stability of a food product for five years or more, or simulate many variables in an ideal or laboratory conditions. Third, easy availability or power of a computer. Computer models can be run very quickly and many instances do not require a lot of detailed technical knowledge. This model can be used to predict what might happen in the processing, handling, transport, storage, and consumption. One of the best features of computer models is that they can be used to explore any number of what-if scenarios. In many instances, simulation refers to what-if scenarios and optimization refers to best way to do it. In this diagram, we have five path options from an original path. Model could be explored what would happen if we use path 1, path 2, path 3, path 4 or 5. That is what if scenarios. Second, we need to know what would be the best path. That is optimization means best way to do it. Models can be useful as tools since they can be used to investigate the possible effects before undertaking detailed, time-consuming experimental works. Models can predict complicated phenomena such as test development or the effect of complex processing events on food products properties. An understanding of food properties is essential for scientists and engineers who have to solve the problems in food preservation, processing, storage, marketing, consumption, and even after consumption. There are three main applications of food properties, first process design and simulation, second quality and safety, and third food packaging interactions. The food properties are used in the engineering design, installation, optimization and operation of food processing equipment as well as a complete processing plant. In this slide, we can discuss an example of the canning process. In a canning process, foods need to be heated to achieve sterilization. Now the question is how long and what temperature to heat the can based on the quality, safety, nutrition, content, and process efficiency. In this case, 
thermal properties such as thermal conductivity and diffusivity, thermodynamic properties for heat requirement calculations, and physical properties that is size and shape are required for all heat transfer calculations and to predict the end point of heating process based on target safety and quality. That is kinetic properties of safety, nutrition and sensory. Process simulation is an important tool to the food engineers in developing concept, design, operation and improvement of food processes. For example, modeling can investigate more alternatives or better products in less time at a low cost. We need to know the kinetic properties of the desired characteristics, that is which needs to be preserved during storage as well as during consumption and even after consumption. The final acceptance will depend on the safety, nutrition and sensory quality. You will find different definitions of quality. I prefer to use quality is defined as the degree of excellence to the users. That is how good the product is to the user. Quality has three dimensions, safety, nutrition and sensory quality. Safety needs to be secured first. Safety is mainly guided by the local and international authorities dealing with food safety issues. Consumers decide on the nutritional quality to some extent as it is mainly guided by the authorities on nutrition and dietetics. The safety and nutritional guidelines change from time to time depending on the new available scientific evidence. Sensory quality is completely decided by the consumers. Even food product has characteristics measurable by sensory evaluation methods or physicochemical test. Some characteristics or properties are physical and are easily perceived, others are unseen. The applications of food properties can also be described as the use of characterizing the defects in a food product. Understanding sensory quality characteristics and emotional factors and familiarity with the appropriate measuring tools are vital to the quality control of food products. Quality loss can be minimized at any stage, thus quality retaining depends on the overall control of the processing chain. When preservation fails, the consequences range broadly from extremely hazardous to color loss. Automatic control of food processing systems helps to improve final product quality, increase process efficiency, and reduce waste of raw material. Food quality in relation to safety, nutrition, and sensory is interrelated with the processing severity. I am providing an example that is cooking a chicken. In this graph, we can see that safety is increased as processing severity is increased, that is increased time and temperature. The nutritional contents decrease as processing severity is increased, while sensory at the early cooking is similar to raw and later stage it is overcooked. Therefore, in many instances, processing severity needs to be optimized based on the many quality parameters. I have provided here a very simple example just to understand. In reality, it is a complicated problem to be solved. It is important to know product and packaging characteristics, food packaging interaction, and stability of packaging during storage and distribution. Informations on food properties is needed in the selection of packaging materials and in design of packages, packaging operations and packaging machines. Metal dissolutions, leaching from the packaging, flavor loss to the packaging, 
transport of desired and undesired components that is barrier properties through the packaging, interaction with the intelligent or smart packaging and mechanical stability. We may think only components list out from the packaging is the issue, however losses of flavors, nutrients and health functional components from the foods to the packaging is also an issue. It may create quality loss extending from nutrients to volatiles. In the forthcoming video, I will expand on the specific properties of foods with their measurements, prediction and applications. Thank you.